Um, I'm relying on a very good summary by a man named Goldblatt from 1995. He analyzes two books of Forward Quebec. His original first book is called Risco Gesellschaft. Gesellschaft, of course, is a sociological term, uh, 100 years old. But Risk Society, translated as Risk Society, for a new modernity in English in 1902. And another book is Ecological Politics and the Age of Risk in 1905. The one main claim that I said that we have risk, epoch, institutional mismatch. Our legal codes, our institutions, standards of proof, civil court procedures are out of phase with the risk we experience. Right now, if you're poisoned, if you're a Samsung worker and you have brain cancer, and this is what happened for several people, if you have brain cancer, you have to prove that it's brain cancer from Samsung. And there's 80,000 chemicals in your environment. It's very hard to prove that once it's introduced. So he's saying the standards of proof are backwards. They're encouraging the creation of risk, and they're not reducing risk at all. Beck says you can look at this in three ways. You can be very passive, like, oh well, I don't care, I, I, I don't want to think about it. That's the way some people are. Fatalistic. Some people looking for collapse, you know, hoping the world will be destroyed before the natural environment is destroyed, human world is destroyed. Or Beck says, we can design new institutions. We can create a new ecologically rational world. This ecologically rational world he calls reflexive modernization. Reflexive modernization means it reflects, reflects the environmental problems in itself. This is ecological modernization, of course, as well. Integrate ecology in modernization. This is our next institutional step for him. And he sees risk society as a theme that is coming into being. It doesn't completely exist. We still have lots of old institutions, old class conflicts, but there are new forms of environmental class conflict based on new material risks, sub-politics, distrust of institutions, and Beck says, we have to seize this moment and help create a new modernity, a new institutional framework. Better ecological democracy and institutions, and better capitalism, he said. Um, the origin of Beck's work, he was an industrial sociologist writing in Germany. His wife was a sociologist, uh, interested in the sociology of the family. His own concern with modernity is pathologies. Pathologies are sicknesses. Uh, the, the sick things that are created with all the good things of modernity, he said. Um, he reflects an increasing body of work concerned with risk assessment, sociology of risk, the construction of risk, who, who do you believe, what tools you use, what scientific methods you use to construct an unknown risk, uncertainty in psychology, all this. Politics and concerns of the West German Federal Republic was the case closest to his experience. Since he wrote originally in German and is German, he wrote the book overlooking Jungian Munich in the late 1980s because, quote, more than any other Western society, the industrial success has been forced via political opposition to reveal its catastrophic underside. Now, I'll skip the discussion about the rise of there. The Risk Society of Thesis um, has five levels of data. Beck shows that the Risk Society is not just the economy, but it changes the, our identity. It changes our family structures. It changes our attitudes toward work. Um, science, he looks at the changes in science, conflict in science, conflict over technology, conflict in law, families, and labor market. The three core ideas, and these are Beck's terms. Beck's term of organized irresponsibility. He says, society is not organized to reduce risk. It's organized to pretend that they're not to blame. Like, you're to blame. Oh, no, you're to blame. And this is all that's done. It's just a constant blame of somebody else. But no one takes responsibility for creating Fukushima. No one takes responsibility for destroying the Gulf of Mexico. No one takes responsibility for the nuclear radiation that is found all over California now from Japan. I mean, it's this international huge problem. He says, how and why institutions of modern society must unavoidably they acknowledge the 
reality of the catastrophe. Yes, it's a terrible danger, but they don't blame themselves. But they, Beck says they're creating it. Their bad institutional environment is creating these risks for us. This is not a material risk. These are socially created material risks that get protected. Nuclear power was created by the state. It was never created by a market. It's defended by states. Uh, the current administration in Korea wants to expand nuclear power by 2024. You heard about that? Probably not. But um, by 2024, South Korea could be the densest nuclear power in the world. France has about 87% of its electricity from nuclear power. That's the number one in the world for scale. But Korea, being geographically smaller, it doesn't need a lot of nuclear plants to have more nuclear power per square kilometer. That's what I mean by density. It would be the most systematically riskiest place in the world for nuclear power. And every 200 years, a large earthquake does happen in Korea. A lot of the state will say, don't worry about it. This is a very stable country. But there are records of catastrophic earthquakes in Korea that happen. Um, but when they happen, guess what? The state will not be able to fund this. Japan, who knows what will happen in Japan? Um, it's already, you know, its economy is shot for more than half. Maybe for 500 years, there'll be a dead area where nobody can live. That may be up to 40 or 50 kilometers around. Japan is only 100 kilometers wide. So half of normal Japan is dead. One stupid accident. That's what Beck says. It's totally unpredictable. It's, we build and socially create these problems, and then nothing happens. Nobody tries to do anything about them. There's no attempt to improve, just to defend the organized irresponsibility. There's no central authority. Um, he also says, this is a Beck word, social explosiveness hazard. There are huge social movements now rejecting uh, nuclear power in Japan. He says, ways in which awareness of these large-scale hazards and catastrophic risks sets up a dynamic of cultural and political change that undermines state bureaucracies, challenges the dominance of science, redraws the boundaries of contemporary politics. So Japan will take a complete turn, most likely, in its political world because of this social explosiveness of hazards. And Beck's ideal is to extend the safety state. This was someone else's term that Beck believes should be expanded to many areas. The idea of the safety state is the relationship between state institutions and their legitimacy and the pledge to maintain environmental security of their citizens. It's like a welfare state, but a welfare of the environment as well. Let's look at some of the main arguments. Number one, outline the characteristics and consequences of the threats and dangers. He says, modernization and industrialism has brought us a lot of development, but it's brought us huge dangers, and those are now biting us in the back. Uh, two, the widening penumbra of risks. I'll define penumbra in a minute. This means a large, shadowy area. Um, at the same time, corporate globalization is occurring, structural economic changes, um, much more individuation, less secure family life, self-identity with globalization. And he says this widening the insecurity in the economy and the insecurity in the environment leads to a new kind of world. Um, the penumbra is a term from astronomy. It's the partial or imperfect shadow outside the complete shadow of an opaque body. It's like previously, if this was risk, risk had a boundary. You know, coal mining, we know exactly how many people maybe will die or be sick. So we can think of the future and we can give them some money and we can budget in the past. We can take taxes and we keep that amount ready. We're ready for this kind of risk because this risk has a boundary. A penumbra, this shadowy area, you don't know the end of it. You're not sure how to budget. 
So when something happens, it, it affects everything. I mean, the Japanese economy has been banned in many, many countries. India has banned Japanese products. Korea has. Um, China is thinking about it. China's found lots of radioactive produce. Uh, and, and up to 30 different radioactive Japanese people, you know, that they stopped at the border too because they didn't know they were radioactive coming into China. So it's this shadowy, indefinite, marginal area outside existing categories of clear, black and white, gray, indeterminate area, cast over huge areas. It's hard to really construct. It seems very ominous, and people fear it, but it's hard to know about it. Like nuclear power, genetic modification, cancer from the environment. I mean, all these things are floating around but we don't know if there's a clear boundary between safety and risk. Um, here's three arguments why risk is different now. Because risk in the past, risk in industrial society was once very locally significant. If there was pollution from a coal mine, it polluted one area, and people could leave. Um, but in contemporary hazards, it lost its spatial boundedness, became society-wide or global in implications for self-annihilation of whole regions, countries, cross-country devastation. So one accident in one small region of a country can kill millions of people in another country that has no connection. There's this penumbra. You don't you know, There's no predictability to these new material risks. Um, these are not ones that would summarize, but ones that I think are connected to new material risks. Uh, inherited DNA damage from nuclear power. It's a nuclear risk that keeps on killing forever. If you're damaged genetically, it doesn't matter if the environment is clean. You're already damaged. It continues. Um, radioactive contamination that you may not know about. A lot of microwave radiation that's expanding around the world, too. Nanotech. Nanotech gets into our DNA and acts, also gets into our lungs and sort of acts like asbestos. Uh, CFC is destroying the ozone layer of the earth and letting in terrible radiation. Plastic pollution in the ocean we've seen, which absorbs lots of other chemicals, you know, they authorized plastic. They thought it was safe, but they didn't think about its ecological re re relationship. Genetic modified organisms, contamination, which are living pollution, they can keep growing um, and maybe destroy crops that are very viable. Despite the propaganda, a lot of genetically modified crops actually require more pesticides and they actually have lower rates of fecundity. So, catastrophic, unpredictable risks. Unmanageable and existing social forms, creating uncalculable industrial and nuclear accidents, chemical releases, you know, intentional or unintentional. The point of impact is now without connection to the jurisdiction. This is an institutional problem. The nuclear frameworks of Japan were regulated by Japan, but you know, once the nuclear radiation is worldwide, is this really a good idea? Just have one small.